Welcome to my epic coding tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you how to code, the absolute beginner. If you don't know how to code at all, this tutorial will help you. Today we're going to learn how to code. We're going to learn how to code an epic drinking game and get absolutely wasted. We're also going to learn how to hack into the Pentagon. It's going to be sick. We might not do the last one, but continue watching anyway. Okay, step number one, you're going to go to Google, you're going to type in Python, you're going to click on the first link, you're going to go to the download button, you're going to click download, whatever the latest version is, and you're good to go. Python comes with an integrated development environment called Idle. A development environment is a set of tools that blah, blah, blah. Just search for Idle once you've downloaded Python, open it up, and you're good to go. Once this is open, you're going to write your first piece of code ever. Just type in print, then a couple of brackets, then a couple of speech marks, and write the word hello. Once you click enter, boom, you've written your first line of code. You are on your way to being epic hacker man. This is all well and good, but we want to write more than one line of code. So go to file, new file, save your file as whatever you want. I'm going to save it as YouTube. I think I saved it as, I don't know, save it and you're ready to write multiple lines of code. You can see here we've got two windows. This one here shows us what we're going to be writing as we're writing it. And this one is going to show us what it looks like once we've executed it. Whatever we write in here will show up on here. It could not be simpler. So the first thing you're going to code is you're going to write print, put speech marks, because anything inside the speech marks is going to be text. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, if you write print and then in the speech marks, whatever you put in there will print on that side. Simple, easy, done. Oh. Bill, printing words is all well and good, but I could do that in a Word document. I want people to interact with my stuff. This guy makes a fair point. How are we going to get people to interact with our stuff? Well, let's go back to where we were and work on the input function. So here I've written the word input, followed by brackets in the speech marks, and inside the brackets we said, what is your name? So here we're waiting for the user to input data. So if we run that, we'll see that it says, what is your name? And then when we type in our name, nothing happens. Why? So we want to save whatever the user inputted as a variable. A variable is a way of saving data. So if before our input and then our question, if we put the word name and then an equal sign, then we're saving whatever the user inputs as name. Name is the name of the variable. It could be whatever you want, but we're saving it as name because it's someone's name. So we've asked the user what their name is. We've saved it as a variable. And now we're going to print name. We're going to print whatever the variable is. And when we run it, Oh, look at that. We've said their name back to them. It's like magic. And this works for whatever they input. So if we input our name as Titty Von Trap, excellent name, then it will say Titty Von Trap back to us. It's whatever the user puts in gets saved as that variable. Well, that's all well and good, but how are we going to use that in a practical sense? That's a great question, pal. So instead of just printing their name, if before the name we have some speech marks and then we say, hello, comma after the speech marks and then the name of the variable which is name when we finally run that module it will say hello and then our name it's like the computer is talking to us we finally have a friend so let's start adding to this let's ask the user how old they are so if we print how old are you that'll just print the question how old are you but we want a user input again we want to ask the user how old they are so if we assign a variable to it and change it to an input we're waiting for an input from the user, and then we're going to assign that to the age variable. So we now have a variable for their name and their age. We're collecting data. We are like TikTok. So then once we've done this, if we print out URA and then a comma and then their age, so it'll print back URA, whatever they put in, and then we can say, and your name is, and then the variable for name, we can print back URA something year old person called this. We are teaching people their own names and ages. It doesn't get better than this. As we all know, names and ages are slightly different things. Names are names, ages are ages. Names are words, ages are numbers. What we've got here when people type in their own age is we're making it a word. But we want to make it a number. How do we do that? Numbers are called integers. If we didn't turn the age variable into an integer and then we plus two to it, so their age plus two, this will happen. And that's bad, and we know that's bad because it's red. So if we call the input an integer, put int and then the brackets, we've changed whatever their input is to an integer. So now we can do stuff like multiplying it, adding two to it. If we want to say you will be this old in two years, we can take their age variable plus two, and it will tell us how old they are in two years. Computers are so clever. So you've just learned how to write your first piece of code. And I'm sure you're wondering, Bill, this is all well and good, but I'm still sober. 
How do I write code and get drunk? Another very good point, handsome gentleman. We are too sober. Let's get drunk by making a drinking game. To make this drinking game, we're basically just gonna need a whole load of random numbers. But our computer is too dumb to come up with random numbers itself. Well, that's why we've got to import the random module. We're importing a module that's gonna help us find random numbers because our computer is too thick to do it itself. Oh, Bill, how do we get a random number? Piss easy, butter. Random, because we're calling the random module and then a dot, and then rand int for random integer. Simple. What do we want the random number to be between? One and 10. So in the brackets, write one comma 10. That will choose a random integer between one and 10. If here we say print the random integer and we run the module, it will show us what the random number is. So we can run that again and again and again, and every time it will give us a new random number. So instead of printing our random integer, because that's boring and that means there's no game, if we assign the random integer to a variable, then we still get a random integer. We just don't know what it is, and then we can make a game out of it. So if we write answer equals our way to get the random integer, we now have the answer being a random number. And we can see that this works. If we print the answer, it prints it out here. But we don't want to print the answer because that's fucking boring. So we want someone to guess. How do we get someone to guess the answer? Well, we want them to input their guess. So we write input, and then we'll say this is your guess, or guess equals. And then when we run the script, it will say welcome to the game, and then guess, so we can guess an answer. But wait, we've guessed an answer, and that's it. That doesn't do anything. We need to save their guess as a variable. So if we write guess as a variable equals whatever their input is, we're now saving the input as guess variable. But wait again, their guess is a number. And what do we do when we want to save something as a number? We put int before it. It's all coming together now, lads. You see what we're doing here? So now we need to see if their answer is correct or if it's not. How do we see if it's correct? Oh, we use an if statement. So if we write if, guess is exactly equal to answer the double equal signs mean exactly equal to so if their guess is exactly equal to the answer we'll print congratulations you win take a shot but what if it's not well we use else it's if else which basically means if this do this otherwise do this so else otherwise if the answer is not if the guess is not equal to the answer then say sorry you lost take a shot I forgot to mention that instead of writing take a shot, I changed it to the answer was, and then outside of the speech marks, I put a comma and then the answer variable, so that when we run the module, it will say the answer was, and then tell us what the answer is, so we can tell how close we were to the actual answer. And you can see that this works as a game, because if we keep running it here and guessing four every single time, eventually it will come out as a correct answer and say, congratulations, you win, choose someone to take a shot. A drinking game where you only have one shot? That's a load of shit. We want to play a game where you take five shots, six shots, seven shots at a time. So let's get rid of everything we did, import the random module again, and start fresh. We're going to print out a nice little welcome message to the game, because we're nice. We're explaining the rules here. I'm thinking of a number between one and a hundred. There we go. We have the intro to our game. Everyone knows how to play. Guess the number. What do we need? We need an input of someone's guess. But wait, what are they guessing? They're guessing an answer. So we want the answer to be a random integer between one and a hundred. We also want their guess to be an integer. So make sure the input is an integer by putting INT at the beginning for integer and then covering everything in brackets. The premise of this game is you're gonna take as many shots as you have tries at getting the answer right. So we also need a variable called tries. So we have the user input and that counts as one try. So the tries starts at one. So obviously, if we ask people to just to guess a number, they have a 1 in 100 chance of getting it right. So we need to give them some choices. So we're going to say, if your guess is higher than the actual answer, we'll say to guess lower. Or if your guess is lower than the actual answer, we'll say to guess higher. And here, we're going to use the if-else statements again. So if guess is more than the answer, guess lower. Else, otherwise, guess higher. But what we've done here is tell the computer to check if the guess is right, and if it's not, tell us if we are higher or lower than the guess, and then end. We've only told it to check once. So here, we're going to use the while function. This basically means that while our guess does not equal, that's what the exclamation mark equals means, does not equal the answer, 
then keep looping through this. But if it keeps looping through this, it will check if our guess is correct, tell us that we're higher, and then loop. But the guess hasn't changed. So it's just going to infinitely print out higher, 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 forever and ever and ever. So what do we do about this? Well, we need to, once it's gone through that loop, have another guess. So we'll add a guess variable and the input as an integer input, which means it will check if our guess is correct or not. And if it's not, it will tell us if it's, if it's higher or lower and then give us another guess. And because we're reassigning the guess variable, when it loops back round, it will check with our new guess. So it won't be on an infinite loop and we'll actually get somewhere with this game. But Bill, how do we know how many tries they've had? Uh, it's very simple. If this is going through in a loop, every time we get to the bottom of the loop, we plus one to the amount of tries they've had. And because we're continuously running this loop until the answer is correct, we can have as many guesses as we want. But once the answer is right, this top line here, while it says, while the guess is not equal to the answer, run this, won't need to be run anymore. So it will move on to the next part where we'll write print, congratulations, you won. But obviously the drinking part of this game is the amount of tries. So we need to print, this took you however many tries it took. And how do we know how many tries it took them? Oh, because we saved it to a variable. So this took you, and then the variable name, which is tries, attempts. It's very simple. And then we can just write something like, oh, take tries, and then we'll put how many tries it took, shots. So if it took you eight attempts, it'll say, this took you eight attempts, have eight shots. This way, we're getting more drunk, more shots, it's a better time for everyone. So there you have it. You've learned how to code, you've made a drinking game, you're getting fucked up, you've had 76 shots because you played it 106 times, and you're now on your way to becoming a hacker man. If you want to see more videos like this, or you want me to do more tutorials, simple beginner tutorial stuff to help you learn and you can code along with me, leave a like, leave a comment, say that you want more, I don't know. Thank you for watching, follow, subscribe, like, I don't know, do all that shit. Goodbye.